all right uh so we are recording now and uh i guess i'll just start us off this is a a meeting about the community themes initiative um it's a project where we want to like build uh, wordpress themes under the uh wordpress username uh or specifically block themes um it'll be a similar process i think uh in terms of like you know community feedback community involvement um and uh there there'll be a github repository which we'll share um and it's uh hopefully just going to be a lot of fun uh i am going to uh maggie's co uh maggie's co-host with me and so um uh, she really uh, knows more about the project. Like, I think she has a lot more ideas than I do. Uh, so I'm just like, do you want to, uh, Maggie, do you want to just describe what the what you have in mind for the project? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, think about uh, when we um, all get together to do the default themes once a year, and we all collaborate and uh, learn from each other and build a really, really nice uh, quality code uh, blog theme. Uh, that goes into the uh, into the world. Uh, keep doing that all over the year, um, so that we keep teaching and learning, um, doing more blog themes together, um, without the constraints of um, the deadline that a default theme has, and all those, um, um, yeah, um, having to meet that deadline, having to. Uh, that pressure, uh, also allowing to get this feedback loop, in, loop into uh, Gutenberg, uh, both on issues that we find that uh, blocks us from building better block themes, uh, and also when Gutenberg uh, allows for new features, we can build themes uh, that uh, use them and um, showcase them, and then other people can uh, look uh, up to those block things that we build uh, as a as a group collect collectively and find something that is good quality that can be used as a reference um, and also get people who don't usually code into block theming because now you can do block themes without actually knowing how to code at all and uh, I think this is a great place for people who like to learn by doing right. yeah that's great uh um so uh we are uh, damon's already had a question in the uh, mm -hmm. chat box uh, that's great <laughs> uh so the question is uh since default themes usually have year naming uh convention what convention shall we use for non-annual well my uh, opinion is that we can name it whatever we want right yeah, yeah no, I, it was just it was kind of a it i don't want to get hung up group hung on my that that's a small detail it's well, fine well, that's great. I mean, those, I mean, those questions are going to come up. Um, yeah, and this, I, I don't see any reason to follow any specific convention. Um, hmm. Just name it or whatever the theme review team rules are, uh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It. Naming is, is hard. <laughs> Naming yeah. is really hard. Yeah, yeah. Since the theme is not getting bundled into a release, really, or the, or the themes, hopefully there will be more than one. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't think we need to constrain ourselves with any kind of naming convention, really, other than whatever is on the repo rules. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Naming is hard. Uh, I think Brian had a, a a theme last year or the year before or something that was. He had the entire design, all the screenshots, mm -hmm. and there are all, all the images, right? And then the name wasn't available, right? I remember having it happened. It happened twice, by the way. I yes, renamed I, it to something else, and then I submitted and got rejected a second time. So I've done we've it had that three too. times. A, th a theme that got three names right at the end of the process. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's where a good thesaurus comes in handy. Uh, so mm -hmm. just uh, find something that works. Um, so this is uh, really just an open conversation about like this project. Um, and so there's no small or too complex questions or, you know, that we can talk about. Um, how many people mm -hmm. here were uh, involved in the uh, 2023 like community uh, themes? I know 
I know I submitted one anyway, but uh, uh, for those unfamiliar, that was, uh, we shipped, I think, 10 uh, style variations with uh, 2023. And so the community could, uh, I'm admitting some people, but um, the community could submit their own designs for it. Uh, and that was like a really scaled back version of this, which would be, uh, more geared toward like a full child theme. Uh, and a, realistically, a child theme could simply just be a style variation, um, you know, or just yeah. a custom theme.json. And, uh, but you can also have your extra templates and uh, functions, of course, too, I would assume. Uh, but yeah, so let's. Uh, yeah, Carolina says it's not allowed. I think you need an index.html template, right? At the very least. Oh, no, no, I'm saying that the uh, reserving names in the team oh, directory okay, is not okay. allowed. Oh, uh, yeah, the index sense. file is no longer needed, but style CSS file. But oh, all yeah. the um, yeah, the team yeah. information, yeah. author, hmm. etc. That's the still metadata. Needed. Yeah. Hey, yeah. quick question regarding the index file: Is that still required for parent-child themes? I know a while back with Powder, like I had to add. <clears throat> excuse me add back the index file into the theme just because of the way the directory itself was set up. Like it was working fine without it, like locally, but because some of the, uh, and I know Blockify was another theme uh, that had Lee, Lee, um, Lee had to do the same thing, just add the index file just to like pass some sniff tests that the directory setup had. Um, all right. It's PHP, I don't think so. Yeah, I'm 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 actually trying to search for a ticket that there was an issue. I don't know about the directory. Uh, I know there was an issue with installing a zip file without the index.php, even though you could activate a theme. Um, or yeah, you could activate it if it was already installed. It was a weird bug or something. Uh, but in terms of the directory, I, I don't know if that's uh still uh part of the sniffer right uh or not i can uh, always remove the file up update the theme and if it breaks put it back in again so yeah i was just i was waiting for lee to go first so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um i don't know carolina do you, uh i know you are still with the theme review team some uh do you know if that's still possible or I don't know if you're still kind of doing work there. Uh, it's not a big deal. Uh, I uh, I was just, uh, I just thought if somebody knew, uh -huh. we don't have to waste time talking about it. But All right. um, I'll just I'll test it out. Ah, Mike McAllister, what's up, dog? <laughs> yeah, we're gonna. I honestly don't remember because I've been focusing on Gutenberg now for so uh, long. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I remember vaguely there was a problem with team check, the plugin, which is used for the team directory, but that shouldn't affect, you know, local installations. Yeah. But I remember we had to add the index file back to pass team check on upload. Yeah. But it's yeah. A, yeah, separate issue. Yeah, and just mm -hmm. to be clear, we're talking about index.php. Uh, you, you you have to have an ind uh, a templates.index.html, uh, of course. Uh, or, or otherwise, you would have had the PHP uh, file. I think Nick wants to say something. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, um, when thinking about this project, it got me thinking about theme iterations. We have 2023, and it's a great rock solid block theme. But one of the things that I find when doing like training and educational material, especially about adding functionality or restricting functionality. Uh, Is that me? No. No, uh, I, I, I got it muted, so there you go. Okay. Um, I always have to like add back a functions.php file or, you know, if we're doing variations or whatever, add a JS, uh, you know, assets, JS, add the variations, JavaScript file and queue the stuff, you know, the, the sheet and everything, or the scripts and everything. So I was wondering if, as part of this project, we have themes that maybe incorporate some functionality beyond just like a base 2023, 
things that people would want to do. Use it as like an educational tool as well. So if you want to add some block styles and add some block variations or whatever, those are demoed in some of these example themes, which give people a direct way to see how it's done, uh, kind of in a more uh, formal way. Just a thought, because 2020 is great, but like you always have to start adding things back to, to do some core functionality, so. Yeah, um, yeah. and I'd actually like to add to the, like the educational aspect of that, like when you build those things and the themes, like I would love to have y'all like talk to me and about getting stuff on the developer blog, just to share mm -hmm. those experiences. That's kind of a, a side thing, but just putting it out, putting it out there for everybody. Um, yeah, I think that's really interesting. Um, I think that's something that we would have to discuss uh, on a per theme basis, I guess. Um, um, I haven't said, but um, the repo is up now. I think the link is on the make blog post. Uh, else I can share it later. Um, right now we have uh, two themes, um, well, in different stages. One is just a design that uh, they are uh, decided to donate for for the host that we can build. Uh, the other is one of the variations that didn't get um, to 2023 that's going to be built into a standalone theme, um, child theme, really. Um, well, the, 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 the design that we have right now that we can build, it's a very... I don't know how I would describe it, but it, it, I think it's gonna have uh, features that are gonna be hard to build without adding extras, uh, maybe CSS, maybe, I don't know about JavaScript, but um, I think it would be a good um, idea to use the repo or the, the um, this um, initiative to try and push as much of the limits of Gutenberg to be able to do what, uh, as much as we can, because if we start relying on CSS or uh, adding assets or something like that, that's the easy way. That's, uh, that's of course, totally valid. And it's also a good learning experience for people who want to learn how to do that. But uh, I think we would be losing a little bit of the opportunity to uh, try to put some of that into core in i don't think there's there's a real reason why we shouldn't add assets if we really really think we need to that we want a theme that has this particular uh, uh functionality that doesn't work in core and we really want to uh for this theme to have it because it's very very special very specific to this theme and i don't think we should say no to that like we would on a maybe on a default theme but um uh, trying to push as much into gutenberg that it, whenever gutenberg doesn't have the capabilities i think it's a good uh, exercise for us yeah, and I don't want to distract. I mean, if if this isn't the place for that sort of thing, then that's perfectly fine. Could be. Um, it, it, it's it's a discussion that we can have. Yeah. 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 Also, thank you for the link. It's on the chat. <clears throat> yeah, I, I I think this is a great opportunity to just explore. Uh, hmm like any like design itch that you want to scratch or you know yeah. function you know just um and without having to necessarily build out a full theme uh it's a great mm. you know great way to explore concepts and you know offer them back to the wordpress community mm. all right yeah, uh, i think the, the greatest thing of, of this is that maybe someone has an idea but doesn't know how to build it but someone else knows how to build things and mm -hmm. doesn't doesn't do well with design so that's like the magic of this like you can get together and do something really nice yeah i don't know do we have any here buddy here that is primarily a designer not much of a developer like uh who writes code i know most of the people here write code that i know um so I don't think so. Yeah, we would really love to uh, bring in, like, yeah, people who are just designers. Um, 
because like block themes this you know you don't have to know all the uh complex stuff of the past anymore mm -hmm. um and i think like being able to onboard some of the like really creative people who didn't think they could build themes uh into the wordpress projects would be you know, it's a great way to do uh, all right so we have both kinds designers and developers yeah um mm -hmm. i think a lot of us are just master of all trade <laughs> or what is that uh mm -hmm. jack of all trades <laughs> master of none maybe <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah <clears throat> but yeah i think it's interesting too like exploring um i've been diving into like the query loop block and like taking a look at uh different ways to leverage it so like mm -hmm. um like there's some mm -hmm some explorations around like if you only had featured images to, to make like a, like an Instagram profile on your own website, like something like that, like using the query loop block and all you do is add a featured image. Um, or, or what does it look like to have like a feed of thought instead of post, you know, like how would that work a little differently and, and why wouldn't that be a, like an out of the box um, way to use WordPress? I, th I think like trying to think of like the alternate ways that that historically we've been at WordPress to maybe try to do, but in like a weird hacky way, but try to figure out how to do it with blocks. I think is very appealing and interesting to, to lean into. I really like that idea as well. Um, just because I think, you know, when you're thinking about making a default theme or even something like an in-between default theme, something that's like a default theme, you're really making one kind of theme and, and it kind of dictates what kind of website you make, or at least people's creativity, I think, is kind of boxed in by the theme in a way. Uh, and I think that's part of the the trouble with educating folks on these new themes is that it really can do a lot more than we previously had. But if we're just giving them another default theme or something like that, I think we're, we're kind of limiting yeah. the amount of experimentation we could be doing and... Um, just that kind of developer relations, that kind of, uh, you know, marketing of the of the software. And these are like more unique use cases, I think we'll start to get into some unique spaces that, that gets people's attention, gets them excited about making themes. It's, it's fun and exciting to us, but I think if you're a new person looking at the wall of stuff that you need to do to make a block theme, it's not really that exciting. So we have to like, we have to make this more exciting. And I think those kinds of unique use cases could help us get there. Yeah. Yeah. I was just yeah. on Twitter yesterday. I think it was Twitter or somebody's blog was somebody made the comment of, you know, what we don't need is a whole bunch of other big, like utilitarian, uh, Nick, Nick, what's that word you use? The monolithic, like one theme that does all the things, right? Like, so I think the idea of niching down, because really like what, I, and I ran into that problem with frost is, um, like, I like the idea of like niching and like creating patterns that are specific to a use case. Now, obviously it's not a theme for everybody, but I think there's already enough of those already being in in the directory or in the works and so like whether it's a yoga theme or a real estate theme where patterns are actually specifically built for that use case and people can say oh i can or even like the full page patterns right like the you know i can create like a, a calendar or a scheduling page because you know i don't have to sift through a hundred different patterns that don't make sense to me in the specific use case so i'm a huge fan of that and that's probably the angle i would take in this personally Mm -hmm. yeah, I was thinking when you were when Rich was mentioning the um, the query loop, I was uh, thinking about themes that we built that were for podcasting or for uh, video bloggers. Those are something that you can't really do with the query loop if you really want to uh, showcase the media that's important and that's relevant for the website. So that's like that kind of niche that mm, doesn't get built that much because of, uh, yeah, podcasting website is very, very specific. Something like that, that would be really nice to explore. And the guardrails for this are just core, right? We just want to be using just core words. Um, uh, we're guiding ourselves by the same guys, guidelines that any block theme that wants to be submitted to the repo, really. So the, yeah. the rest is up to discussion, really. So that includes Gutenberg then, obviously, because that's part of yeah, the, the repos absolutely. install. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. I was just thinking like WooCommerce support and, th you know, things that like, yeah. you know, once people get past the in initial, like, oh, how do I do this kind of thing? Um, yeah. As long as the yeah. team doesn't break, if Gutenberg or WooCommerce is not installed, we can support mm -hmm. whatever plugin yes. we want. 
As cool. in, you know, recommended, not required. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, if you want to build a site that's mainly a shop, that's for sure it can work. As long as, like Karina said, that when you uh, deactivate WooCommerce, it still works and doesn't break. Cool. Yeah. So, all right. Uh, yeah. I was looking at, uh, I did see something uh, like, uh, mentioned in our notes uh, about potentially like uh, design uh, working with Figma. Um, the, uh, with the original 2023 uh, project that you could create a, a variation through Figma, right? Mm -hmm. um, I have no idea how to use that tool, by the way. I'm just confused. So, uh, <laughs> um, I just know how to read it. Yeah, so... I don't know. Yeah, I'm assuming we have several people who are like who prefer to use that now. So like, um, having uh, like some like at least being able to point to resources and stuff around that would be, um, and anything we can do to like bridge the like gap from people who just want to use Figma and create a theme and like kind of transport it over, like um, mm -hmm. that would be awesome to see too uh, as you know, at least at like a just simple level, let's uh, provide some resources for people who want to do that. Um, mm. I, uh, I keep coming back to the developer blog. Like I want someone to write a, a, a post on how to do all this for us, you know, <laughs> uh, like some of you use these tools and uh, how they work in your data or your day to day job. Um, well, I do think you provide like a real natural flow where you create a theme, it's in the community repo, you write an article on how you did it. You mm -hmm. know, I think that's a really nice, people can go down, use it, you know, so that'd be a really cool thing. Yeah. Uh, Damon, you're, what was the other thing about considerations around standardizing block patterns in these or the... Well, I, th I, I guess I, yeah, I, I was just thinking, um, I mean, I see the group net, uh, kind of steering towards niches and I think that's awesome. And I think that will probably have some unique patterns associated with it, but I also think there could be potential for having like standardizing some, some, uh, patterns that we might pull from like the pattern directory or something that we, I don't know, yeah, what that would look like, but um, what, I guess once we see a few, a theme or two being developed, and if they're pulling in common patterns, then that might be a, something, a larger project or a different spinoff project, I guess. Yeah. Uh, all right, I'm looking, <laughs> yeah, I food truck simple restaurant theme without a, a, a pdf menu that would be a great yes. uh great thing <laughs> um i actually have a food truck like literally right down the road from me it's open three days a week i'm like i want y'all to have a like i want to order online instead of like calling uh like i just want to click a button to get my burger <laughs> so but it, it's a little old school uh yeah but yeah, I would love to like say, here's a WordPress theme and I just install it. Maybe you have some kind of integration, but uh, yeah, great uh, idea of a specific uh, theme type. Uh, yeah, we got to go ahead. There's also um, like more kind of unusual things we could think about. Like how about a theme that was... Um, targeted at like um, presentation slides like instead of mm -hmm. using um you know google docs and creating your slides in that you could actually have a wordpress theme that was targeted for that that would be an interesting theme to create with using a community theme because it gives it a sort of more um i don't mean authority but <clears throat> you've got a bit more trust don't you if it's been created by a group of people who are experts in wordpress you sort of it gives it that kind of that almost canonical feeling oh yeah uh i would love to see that 
Um, I think that's a great idea. Are you volunteering to do this one? Uh, the uh, write the JavaScript for the slides. I don't think, think we need to do any JavaScript. Uh, okay. We can do yeah. it with them. Fi or... Fixed uh, sticky position. Fixed sticky. Yeah, yeah. I think uh... it's someone prototyping that, and it's really, really cool. That, so that's amazing. Yeah, we should try that. Oh yeah, that yeah that simplifies us for us like actual just like theme developers, just a UCS mm -hmm. or or just a sticky position. And so, uh, yeah. Um, I'll have to get a link if we have one available for that, just to test it. But you should open an issue on the repo to that. <laughs> so so some designer can actually uh, flesh out the the looks of that. Maybe I'll just open a PR. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I think we can, like, if you have ideas and uh, for anybody who's just like, oh, I got this neat idea for a theme, just like create an yeah. issue. Like you don't necessarily have to build it all yourself or like if I mean it's a collaborative collaborative process, yeah. Um I think um another thing to try, it's it's very difficult, um, would be to not use Figma to start the design oh, exploration yeah. within the editor. It's gonna be very difficult. Um but knowing what those difficulties are and, and recording them either on a GitHub issue, like these are the, the top 10 things that, that slowed me down because we know it's slower than in Figma, uh, but, but having a lot of feedback on what exactly needs to be improved will help that process because it should be as much as an exploration tool as a design tool. Um, and, and, and at that point, I think it'll, it'll really increase adoption for designers. It also prevents you from designing things that are impossible to do in blocks without custom CSS. So. Yeah. But, but I'd like to identify those like guardrails that, that are like, that really shouldn't be there. Like what, like, like what's impossible that should be possible and <laughs> right now might just be way too difficult to do um, unless you're one of us who, who've been doing it for years and we know exactly how to wrangle it. I think that that would be good to kind of take those binders off and, and look. Yeah. I will say the most common feedback I have is around navigation, uh, building out, yeah, anything beyond like what you could do uh, with the editor right now. Um, yeah, which navigation has always been a problem in WordPress. It's not like the block editor introduced, you know, problematic navigation. Um, so, yeah. Um, like I could probably, there's probably hundreds of tickets and there's probably, are, they're probably already filed, uh, most of them um, around navigation. Um, yeah, mega menu thing, like <laughs> <laughs> uh, Damon added. Uh, yeah, just one thing that's an entire mega menu. Uh, let's, let's, let's do it. Oh, there is one actually. Oh, you're searching for it. Then you get the name. You have the name. <laughs> Go yeah. for it. All right. Let's see. So, uh, yeah, like uh, officially at this point, we're just calling this a proposal. You know, there's not um, like some top down, like we're definitely doing this. Like, I may feel like we are. Uh, we have. We've had great feedback uh, so far uh, in the theme review meeting last week. Um, so, like, I do want us like to come away with this meeting. It's like, okay, we're going to do this. It's, you know, just uh, sort of not call it a proposal, but to call it a like actual. Uh, this is a project. Um, um, I don't know. Uh, we don't have anybody who kind of disagrees with that, right? So. Um, I think, you know, now it's just, it's going to be about like kind of, I'd like just getting started. Uh, there, are, I think two projects started and those, uh, Maggie, uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, were both based on style variations from the previous. Uh, no. Oh, they no. weren't. Okay. That's just, uh, there's one that's a style variation that's going to be built onto a child theme. And the other is just a design that we are, this, uh, um, donated. For it to be built we gotta uh, decide how we're gonna build it what's 
uh, what are we going to use as a base? I don't know if it's a theme that we should build as a child theme of 2023 of as a standard on theme. I, I guess that's up to uh, discussion, really. Um, I asked her if she could uh, give us a design, so we had something to start with, and it wasn't just an open empty repo. So uh, there's already issues open uh, in case someone wants to start discussing, start working. Um, so there's something to start with. Um, because I, I I didn't want to to contribute any one's time because this is uh, of course something that we all do um, for free basically. Um, so yeah, um, I think someone had a question. Yeah, I was just I guess I and I might be jumping ahead, but I just straight go into process. But and I'm curious, like, so the community themes repo, um, are we thinking? There's going to be individual themes in there, or are we going to spin yes. off? Yeah, uh, the idea is uh, we're going to have a folder for th for each theme, and um, that's how automatic works when they're uh, developing themes. So there's um, a script that we can reuse that they have um, for um, pushing to the repo once uh, every theme has been uh, accepted. In the directory so we if we need to update just with a script we can just push directly stuff like that and automate everything so yeah the idea is that all the things are going to be on the same repo okay perfect yeah i'm not usually a fan of doing that but i think it would work <laughs> uh, in this situation uh to ha yeah have everything in one place yeah, um, I skipped ahead past the GitHub processes. Uh, what are your thoughts about uh, providing examples on the hybrid teams? What do you oh. call them hybrid or universal? Hmm. Yeah, interesting. Um, yeah, I guess I've so been we... trying to avoid them, but people uh, are asking about them more and more. Um... I guess um, it all depends on the needs of the person who's building the theme, right? Why are you deciding to build a, a hybrid theme instead of a block theme? Usually there's some kind of constraint that's coming from that. So we don't really have those. So if we think it's a good experiment to uh, work on for learning reasons, then I guess we can decide to, do, to go ahead. But um, without any real constraints, I don't see the benefit to building a hybrid team, but that's me personally. And I, um, I mean, yeah. I, I, I want to be uh, clear that this is something that I've started and I, I got the ball rolling, but I'm not making the decisions here. I just had the ideas and I, this is something that we all discuss together, so. Uh -huh. Yeah, I could, yeah I, I could see, sorry, Caroline, uh, you go ahead. <laughs> no, I was going to read Mike's comment about agencies are building a lot of hybrid teams. Hmm. They're not able to go for block teams yet. Yeah. Yeah, I could see potential potential as a learning resource. Like, hmm. I just immediately popped into my mind a transition theme, right? Hmm. Yes, <laughs> uh, that's what I'm thinking as well. Hybrid yeah. and functionality is kind of pulled away to show people like how you know you're basically transitioning them to block themes. Yeah. Uh... Rich does have a good question. Are we looking to make an examples resource or themes to push to the repo? And I, I lean yeah. towards the latter. Like mm. uh, we can have an asset. I mean, I think an examples repo is a whole separate thing. Um, and I think what we now this project should be is primarily geared toward putting block themes, you know, quality block themes into the, you know, theme directory. Uh, mm. But that doesn't mean it can't serve uh, these things can't serve as good examples of how to build. Um, I do worry about uh, like maybe going into like hybrid themes or I'm not even entirely sure what a universal theme is. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I haven't had a great definition on that. Um, but like, like I think we want, I, at least this is my opinion, I'm saying we, but my opinion is I think I would want this to be strictly block themes, like a push the block editor as far as we can um 
Maybe yeah, the theme I mean, experiments repo is a better place for those kind of things, maybe. Yeah, I Go think ahead, I agree. Um, I agree with that, Maggie. Uh, I think I, I, I kind of look at these as like, what is like the ideal WordPress experience? And and that should be what we kind of aim for with each of these that we publish. Yeah. Um, but when you, like, that's how you would learn WordPress if you're starting with, uh, with the site editor for the first time with one of these block themes. Like, what would that look like? Um, and start from that point, I think. I agree that block themes, I mean, 100% block themes is the future, but it's not what I'm being asked when people email me or oh. tweet me or, yeah. yeah. It's not what I'm primarily being asked about. It's not what mm -hmm. people have questions about. Yeah. It's more about the transition. Uh -huh. Yeah. But yeah. There is also the opportunity though to to change that narrative in by example, isn't there? That mm -hmm. if we start providing lots of examples of hybrid themes, then that is going to increase people's sort of thinking, oh, this is the way to do it. Whereas if we just we put that question to one side and we just say, no, look, these are great examples of block themes. Look at what you can do with block themes. There's a whole world of possibility out there. Because at the moment, there's really, in terms of default themes, there's really only two. two. Um, so if, if we can show how many great things you can do with block themes, maybe that also will start to reduce those questions because people will say, oh, I don't, I don't need to worry about transition. I can just dive straight into this thing. It's ready. Yeah, I worry about if we if WordPress or that use name puts out a hybrid theme, it's like we officially recommend it. Exactly. Yeah, probably which is... shouldn't. We should mm, yeah, make it easier. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it's um yeah. I agree. That's also difficult. Yeah, um, I, I think there's uh there I do love the idea of like the hybrid themes now that we have like template parts you know in the classic with with classic templates um because i think that's the transition we needed like three years ago or two years ago or whatever it was uh and yeah because that's how you like handle the navigation you just have a or you know you you, you do your custom navigation and everything else is a template part uh you know or block, block template part um i don't know there might be room for exploration there um if there's like i think it, it's going to come down to the need of the theme itself uh anyway uh, like if there's just something that's not possible with the block editor then we it, it should be like it's well we, first of all we need like you know to file tickets upstream um, making sure like folks like rich are aware and he can build out that stuff maybe for us uh, hmm. or or whoever else here is you know really working on like core stuff um but yeah i, I could see us doing like maybe there's a some php in in these themes too um but yeah, I'm trying to catch up with the chat too and talking. So I might be, I might start rambling. Um, yeah, so we have, yeah, we have like another 20 minutes or so. So we, we're still good on time. I just had another thought on the um, hybrid thing. I, I do agree. I think this should be focused on, on block themes. Um, but I do think it is, um, and maybe this is because I've been just talking to agencies a lot over the past six months. I think it is important to just always keep in mind, especially if the initiative of this thing is to increase adoption and to get folks building these kinds of themes. <clears throat> like we're in a one world, one reality of block themes. And it seems like everyone else I'm talking to um, is in a whole different reality about block themes. And maybe it's because they haven't experimented yet. They're not quite there and, and they'll get there. But I think even if we do make this about block themes, we have to keep an empathy for those folks who, whether they can, they're just not interested yet, or they literally can't because they have so many client projects that are wired up one way that they can't just jump into a block world and then train their clients and their dev team. That's always a big thing is the financial hurdle. And so I think whatever we do, just keeping in mind that um, 
this is going to be a, tr a transition for a lot of folks. And so anything we can do along the way to help with that, maybe it's uh, educational materials outside of it. Maybe it's, um, you know, some other kind of hybrid examples. I don't know. I just think it's um, just important to keep in mind these two different worlds that are kind of coexisting right now and how big of a transition we're actually going through um, with the with the folks down on the ground. I personally what are you think... Saying? I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. I personally think that um, there's a reason why classic themes are going, aren't going away. Um, there's um, a public for them and there's a use for them. So I don't think everyone needs to go and build blog themes for everything. So it's fair that they don't need to, to make the change if they don't want to. Like, um, it depends. Some people can do uh, the transition, some others, uh, maybe it's not for them. It's going to be a waste of money and they're not going to get uh, anything really worth it back. So, I think what you're saying about having um, two sides to this almost with the education resources is key, but also really what is missing is inspiration. If you think back to the early day, I'm going to sound like grandma, but if you think back to the early days of theming, one of the things that inspired was some of their like art and creative themes. And we've had a bit of that, but we haven't had enough of that, right? Um, and having some of that, and this is personal bias maybe, but having some of that as part of this, I think really could be important. Yes, there's practicals. Um, and yes, there's that. And there's that agency. Um, but on, this is maybe an opportunity to do something that doesn't have to be a default thing. Default thing has, has to be everything, right? That there's a yeah. red, like anyone that's worked on a default thing, they are not where you are necessarily getting to flex your creative everything. Um, but this could be, right? Um, yes. That's kind of what excites me, is a chance to just like experiment and brew and collaborate. That's kind of why I turned up. Um, yeah. And a chance to kind of do, I don't know, some banana Kubrick, I don't know who I'm going to pick some old theme names, just some wacky stuff that inspires people. Um, I feel we need that in theming just as much as we need some education at the moment. Otherwise, theming is just banana, banana smoothie Kubrick block theme. That's what we need. Yes. Uh, yes. But we, need, we need that as much as we need the education because otherwise people are just going to not think that there's any creativity anymore and yes. they're going to go to other products for creativity and that's a shame so anyway I'll go back to my grandma rocking chair but that's kind of what I think you, you can give the education resources yes we need that but we also just need some beautiful themes that inspire I very much agreed uh, yeah, and that's why I want Mike to specifically design one of our <laughs> these themes, as he uh, and of, of course we have a great a uh, lot of great designers here, so I'm actually looking forward to like every one of you, like doing something, um, and hopefully, you know this will be a great project because of that. <clears throat> and yeah, so I don't want us to be too caught up in the weeds of like you know are we like you know doing hybrid themes or you know like let's just like build stuff that's cool um uh, and like just show what wordpress can do and figure out what the bugs are um figure out where like it really needs to improve um like that way like you know for these people who perhaps can't you know, move to block themes yet, or maybe don't want to because they feel it's too limiting. Maybe like we really want to, uh, you know, try to sell them on the idea of block themes. And, and that's, I think really what this whole project should be about. Um, but build stuff that's cool. I can get on board with that. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Damon has, has a good question. Is there a Slack channel? This initiative should focus conversation around. I think uh, we talked about that during the theme uh, meeting the other day. I think Core Themes Project is a good channel for this. 
yeah and it's incredibly hard sometimes to get new channels for so but that would be yeah. uh, per perfect so um quick question when thinking about like what kind of stuff to to design and go after and build um it might be interesting if uh, i don't know if we have this kind of data but to to kind of look back on some of the most popular themes of the past 10 years and look at what's interesting about them what was popular and then to do like a side by side and show like okay well this is the block version of that Let's see how we can build this in uh -huh. in blocks the most you know your favorite kind of theme now it's fully editable live in the site editor i don't know if we have that maybe it would just be anecdotally thinking about what themes we used in the past but i think that could be an interesting way of taking some of the guesswork out not that the, i don't want to explore and do random new fun things but I, i'm also just thinking about um kind of using what we have to some degree mm -hmm. banana smoothie <laughs> 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 Anyone who hasn't actually seen that thing, this is the weirdest conversation. <laughs> well, we've seen it all right. All right. So, uh, yeah, floor is still open. Um, yeah, I think the biggest takeaway we our thing we need to come away with is like, yeah, we're we're doing this today, right? everybody's agreed we're doing this like um and i'm i'm excited about uh participating in this uh i maybe i'll actually get a design done uh, between everything else but if not i will be testing everybody's uh stuff and playing with it because i enjoy themes uh mm -hmm. And, uh, and if you want, uh, I'm also happy to collaborate with folks. Like if you just want to design something and say, hey, Justin, build this in the block editor, um, feel free to do that too. So one thing that might be a good idea as this progress is um, saying what someone wants to do to partner with another person. So um, in the past, one of the things has been like, hey, I've got an awesome design. And then someone just wanders around with it and never gets it coded. Um, so if someone just wants to code awesome designs, awesome, say it. Or if someone just wants to create awesome designs, just say that. And then kind of partnering and bedding it up, that would be kind of awesome. Or if someone wants to do everything, then awesome. <laughs> Go and do everything. But just kind of like um, opportunities for collaboration might be a good way of doing it as well to help kind of unblock. Or saying like, hey, I would actually like to collaborate on something um, and doing that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so mentioned in the comments are some of the most popular themes are like these big uh, multi-purpose you know, uh, themes uh, that kind of do everything. Uh, uh, there's a few pointed out like Astro, Cadence, uh, Generate Press, uh, uh, but I think there's also like uh, Anders, uh, is it Anders Norin, is his, how do you pronounce his last name? Uh, like he's done some things that are very like, like uh, specific to like, you know, a certain uh, type of industry or, or, or it's not, there haven't been uh, in these universal type themes there. So, but the designs are great. It, it, and I think you can kind of carve out like an area doing like, yeah, thanks for the link. Um, you know, there's a place where in the community where those themes can be popular. Um, yeah, they're universal writing. Uh, he does, he does uh, some of his are more geared toward like the written word. Uh, uh, yeah, so it'd be beautiful for blogging or just long form uh, storytelling, but um but he's also there's the uh like the uh profile page like a single page thing that was really neat i think in the last year um i knew i've experimented a little with that uh brian i think i don't know if brian's still here uh has two um so yeah i mean there i think if you look at maybe like 
the feedback he gets and what he's done, there's room for, you know, following a specific model um, or, you know, following whatever, you know, path you want. Um, it doesn't have to, and, and there's a uh, wisdom and also looking at some of the uh, really super popular themes too. Yeah, I think um, looking into numbers, it's a bit tricky because this mm -hmm. is again uh, the long tail thing. You're gonna be the 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 ones with the highest numbers. Like they're gonna are gonna be the ones that uh, do most things. That are like a Swiss Army knife of themes uh, because they are gonna reach many different kinds of uh, users. But then you have a long. Uh, a very long tail of users that are going to use those we call niche themes are we gonna if you want to call it something else uh because they they are more specific to what they need and there's maybe as many users uh using those but they're spread out through very different specific themes a specific theme just by definition is going to have a, a, a narrower uh user base that doesn't mean we don't need them and we have the the privilege of not needing to cater to to cater to a to a specific user base we just uh design or develop to our own whims so we can decide if we want to go build this uh very useful very popular theme or uh something that is very um unique and that there's nothing like it anywhere else we think we can do both. Like it's fair that we explore both avenues. Yeah. Um, so we have about five minutes left. I want to make sure that everyone has, uh, you know, the ability to ask any like final questions or bring up any other uh, final topics. So it might also be interesting to do uh, themes. Look at accessibility themes as well. So it might be interesting to look at kind of readability um, and just yes. kind of explore that on the front. Um, like uh, what could be kind of different things there from what could be like the, the best readability um, and different things than that. And when I say accessibility, I don't just mean for a particular type, just really just strongly accessible as well um, and different things like that. Um, and really play with the fluidity. So different things like that. What's like the best reading that we could do where everything gets out of its way. So that's kind of what I mean by just kind of experimenting as well. Uh, it doesn't have to be like some wacky color combination with some wacky art stuff. It's really experimenting with form and function. Hmm. Yeah, great. Uh, uh, just kind of go make sure we get the questions. Uh, how do we assure that themes are updated? That's a great question uh, there from the yeah. chat. Uh, That's another reason why having all the themes in the same repo is a good idea. Uh, it keeps the conversation all in the same place. And if there's like a block update and all the themes need updating on the markup, we all we can do them in batches. And so all, they all get uh, updated at the same time. I guess that's uh, there's not a... a straightforward answer to that we can we sh we should uh uh um strive to keep the themes updated but well, i can't as you know that. we have had the four teams except for one year since 2010 right mm -hmm. and uh, yeah the default teams do not get updated yeah we have bug reports for well, basically all of them, at least a yeah. couple per week. There are three or four people triaging and doing pull requests for these teams. It's not enough. I oh, do yeah. not want this to be prioritized over the, the current default teams. That is oh. my concern. And I do not want this to be abandoned either because I feel like, Jay, fun, experimenting, and but now my team is published. Who is going yes. to be responsible in six months when there's a core update? And yeah, the block mm -hmm. might not work anymore. This CSS is incorrect, and so on. Yeah, I th uh, 
I don't think we have that figured out yet. And I think it, that's uh, not just specific to updating themes. There's like that some administrative tasks there that we need to figure out because um, that's that's just part of the administrative stuff. Um, um, I don't have any answers for that yet. Um, yeah. Um, but I feel like the more people we have involved, the easier it is to kind of kind of do that. Um, but once you get to like 10, 15 themes or something, and then if WordPress makes a major change to like a block that's using every one of them, then you need to update every theme. So, um, so how much, I think is a question of how much updates are we talking? And that yeah. might be like the rules. <laughs> um, and also if someone feels ownership of something, then they will be more both way. Life gets in the way. So we also have to respect that people's lives change and situations change. People will have full time. My full time job isn't this anymore. So everyone has different jobs that do different things, right? Like have hobbies and do different things. Um, but I think Rich just added a good comment, which I 100% yes. agree with. Uh, yes. One of the things is like, if you remember old things, yeah, the maintenance burden was a nightmare. That was one of the whole reasons for the whole new idea of themes, right? So uh, we shouldn't be having huge maintenance burdens. Otherwise, we should all go back to core and be fixing things so that we don't have a huge maintenance burden. So part of that yeah. is this, right? <laughs> so one there was a reason why we shouldn't write CSS for these themes so we don't have to maintain it. <laughs> yes, I agree. But that also blocks us from having some fun and we will get yeah. there but oh, uh, we can have see, fun and I lost my thread. <laughs> I lost my thread. <laughs> um so <laughs> one of the problems with 2022 and 2023 right is that they are required to be backwards compatible but with oh. these teams i hope we no <laughs> have a little bit more freedom so no. that we can actually have a minimum required wordpress version no yeah no no backwards compatibility <laughs> No, I'm thinking about, for example, 2022 still yeah, has to use the old comments form block. I remember. We, yes. are, we can't remove it. We're going to be yes. stuck to that. Forever. I remember. Yeah, not, yeah. not the case. <laughs> yeah, okay, good. That's going to be blockers for those things. Yeah. yeah, I would agree wholeheartedly that we do not need to be backwards compatible with this project. <clears throat> All right. Uh, yeah, thanks. So yeah, uh, I think uh, when I when we publish the uh, show notes, we will probably need to bring up a question, just a, an open question about a little uh, around administrating, updating, and uh, and so on. That that needs to be a discussion that happens um, because yeah, we all want to do it, but who wants to like you know do all the boring you know parts you know or you know the less the less exciting stuff. Um, all right, uh, we are out of time. So I just uh, want to say I appreciate everyone who came today and joined. Uh, great feedback from everybody, a great discussion. And I look forward to, you know, many more to come. Uh, Maggie, do you want to share any final thoughts? Uh, thank you so much for being here. It means a lot that you're all uh, excited about this idea. Um, Hopefully see you soon in the repo. All right. Bye. Bye.